So here we are in the Century Club yeah. in uh, Shaftesbury Avenue. It's London. nice, isn't it? Very nice, yeah. 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 I, I, I feel I should call you Lord, Greg, <laughs> with, the, with the, the top and tails. Yeah. Um, have you seen me in this gear before? I have, I have. Plenty of Only times. at the weekends, though. Yeah. Only. But, uh, <laughs> but thank you so much for coming and, and bringing Pleasure. this amazing instrument. Yeah. Um, can you tell us what this is? Well, this is a standard um, Edison um, phonograph, um, and it's got a... Uh, uh, quite a long horn and uh, chain holding it on. Built in about 1905, so it's over 100 years old, and it, it's a two-minute machine. Later on, they changed the gearing, and, and you could get four-minute cylinders, but the original ones uh, were two minutes long. And um, what was the... Like, what were they created for? Was it originally for music, or...? No, I mean, actually, when... When Edison in, invented um, recorded sound, he didn't think that it would be used for music. Um, his first thought was that it would be great as an office, um, a piece of office equipment to do dictation into. Okay, so that, uh, so, and, and he designed his machine so you had earplugs so that the secretaries could hear what you'd written and then and do the typing and so on. But, but obviously, very quickly, it was obvious that uh, the commercial application of it was for recorded music. So the, the cylinder itself is made from wax? Yes, um, there, are, there are two types of um, wax cylinders. The very early types, um, which is actually the type that we're going to be um, using, um, which is a, a, f a softer wax, and the, the music is recorded directly onto the wax cylinder. And, and so it's every single cylinder is cut individually. Um, and uh, in the olden days, when they had to record a band, they would have a bank of cylinder machines to cut them. So there'd be about 13, 14 cylinder machines, and then they would get the brass band or whatever it was to perform in front of this bank of machines. Okay? Um, and so if they sold more than 13 copies, they would have to record it again. So, in fact, it would take a whole day just to record maybe 200 or 300 records. And I've seen pictures of um, people recording and onto a wax cylinder. Yes. And I think, did, did they experiment with the size of the horn? Some yeah, of well, huge, what or? happened is that uh, very quickly after, obviously that couldn't carry on that way. It was costing a fortune in just musicians' fees. So um, Edison inv invented this process where they, they could electrostatically cover the original cylinder um, in gold yeah. and then what they would then do is once it's been covered in gold electrostatically they would use electrolysis to build up a copper um, a, a very solid copper um, version a negative like of a master yes of mm -hmm. the cylinder once they'd made that once it was strong enough they would mount the cylinder from inside it the master cylinder and then you had a mold which you could then make other cylinders from okay. and they would use a much uh, a higher melting point wax to make those cylinders so those cylinders are a lot more um, a lot more durable and it was called the gold process okay. and so that they could uh, just record it once and make lots of copies from it and to do that they as you say would have a great big horn like that and the orchestra would would be in a, in a V shape in front of the horn with the softest instruments at the front and the loudest instruments at the back to try and get the sound balance because they had to try and balance the sound acoustically because there was no microphones yeah. um, and it wasn't until 1925 really when cylinders were pretty much dead by then that electric, electric recording was invented so that before 1925 all recording was done acoustically and I know that, that the 45 RPM um, the length of that yeah. kind of dictated the length of a, of a song. Yes. So I, I guess in, in days before 1925 or before the four minute yeah. version, all songs recorded were two minutes? Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously on this machine, and that, that was up to, I suppose, up until the end of the 1910s. Most songs were cut down to two minutes. The original um, uh, discs actually were seven inches and mm -hmm. they went at 78. So they were only in a, a, a minute and a half. Right. So that very quickly they, they expanded to 10-inch discs. 
So if James Brown had been recording, it would have been, it would have been take me to the chorus. Take not not, the, not, 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 <laughs> not yeah. even the bridge. Even forget the bridge. The bridge. Forget, <laughs> forget the bridge. Yeah. yeah so um, so all, all these cylinders are two minutes, and it wasn't till quite a bit later that they uh, uh, had a four minute machine. Okay. Do you have any cylinders with you? Well, there's a little, little range of them here. Oh yeah. Um, <coughs> This is one of the originals from 1905, so that's over 100 years old. Do you want to have a listen? Yeah, let's have a, have a go. Let's see what this one is. This is a banjo solo. And there were, there were no labels, so they had to announce the record. Pretty clear yeah. for something that's uh, over a hundred years old, really. And I, I guess uh, certain instruments would lend themselves better. Yes. To... I mean, um, they they really they they needed percussive instruments. So obviously banjo was was very yeah. good because it was nice and sharp and clear. Things like concertinas, piccolos. You get a lot of piccolo solos. Handbells, you know. Okay. So there was all sorts of strange instruments that you see featured on cylinders that you wouldn't really uh, come across nowadays. Yeah. Um, uh, but as they obviously developed the recording techniques, then you started to get um, bands and musical artists. Uh, but the artists that were most popular were those ones that could really project their voice into the, into the machine. Yeah. So yeah, I, quite... I think I've maybe told you before, but I had a, a chance to record direct to um, wax cylinder yes. in, in America once, and I had to use a megaphone uh, um, it was myself, Paul on guitar, and Ben on clarinet. Yes. And all three of us had to gather around the horn. Right. And they just said, there, "There's no dynamics. Just everything has to be loud." Yes. Uh, to, give, to give the cutter a chance to, yeah, the, to, to cut, cut the groove. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was, it was incredible. Yeah. Oh, yes, it is. It's it's quite a, a different technique to when you're recording an album in a studio. You can, um, of course, uh, put uh, music that's been recorded onto cylinders. Mm -hmm. But you have to be aware that the te technology um, of the cylinder is such that it can't reproduce bass very well. Mm -hmm. Anything below 300 hertz, it struggles to play, particularly on this type of machine, on the old uh, original machines. And that's because the grooves, instead of being uh, vibrations like that, they're vibrations like that. Okay. And uh, if you have a too loud of, of a bass vibration, the needle actually physically jumps out of the groove. Okay. So you just get this kind of clattering sound. So um, I, I've got some cylinders we have recorded, which has still got a bit of bass on, and they make this kind of very strange sound uh, from time to time. Do you, do you have anything modern that's been transferred that you could play? Yes. I could or, or if you have something else that yeah, from older times, if you want to. Let's do that. Let's play, let's, should we play a, a Duke special song? Oh dear. Yeah. <laughs> I think we ought to. So uh, this, this is one um, that I made earlier, as they say. And there's only two copies of this in the world. You've got one. I, I do have this one. This is the yeah. other one. Uh, <laughs> and um, to be able to do this, I've had to take pretty much all the bass off, off, of, the, uh, off of the recording. You can sing along if you want. <laughs> <laughs> this is like my high-pitched grandfather singing, great-great-grandfather. Yeah, yes, it's probably a little bit fast. I have to adjust the governors inside. Oh, I, I might have spared it up a bit to get it to two minutes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would have edited it as well. Um, yeah. I think there's a verse and a chorus missing okay. in order to get it all on. You'll, you'll be able to spot the join button. Right? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I oh know, because when you do it, it's different every night anyway. <laughs> it, sounds, it just sounds so full of, like, dust and yeah. oldness. <laughs> yeah, even though it's not. Yeah. I think we, uh, the trouble is, it is very wearing on the ears. Yeah. If you listen to too People much say that about my music all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, not your music, just the way it's reproduced. Um, uh, my colleague and I, uh, DJ78, uh, who mm -hmm. you know well, yeah. Um, we did. Uh, uh, we have done a few CJ sets using two cylinder machines at Bestival and Campus. Cylinder Festival. jockey. Cylinder jockeys. Yeah. And um, but we can only do it for about 25, 30 minutes because after that, P 
people's ears start to explode. <laughs> so, uh, so it's great fun, but uh, it's you know it's it's really only a novelty. But I love them, you know. And with people in the same way that uh, after this you had the the gramophones mm. and. Uh, and then the portable gramophones where people could take them out. Would people have, do you think, have taken these out? Well, they're or? quite, I mean, certainly uh, well, a machine like that one, can you see that back there? Um, the gem machine there, which is quite small, you know, yeah, yeah. You, you could easily take that on a picnic with you. Yeah. And I think people did, you know, they took a little box of cylinders and because there's no electricity required, you could just sit in a field and just, just play them. Yeah. So uh, uh, they're a little bit more breakable maybe than than some of the records, but the records were quite breakable yeah. in the early days. Now, the, um, as you know, I'm about to bring out a new record and um, the plan is to create a version of it on yes. wax cylinder. Yes. Um, which I'm very excited about. It's quite a challenge. And is there, are there many places now that, that still, like, it, does someone make the cylinders? Yeah, there's a couple of a uh, couple of places in the UK, and I think there's a couple of places in the States as well. Mm -hmm. um, the the place where I, I made the uh, the one we just heard mm -hmm. is in Bath, okay. um, but there's also a company in Sheffield that, that, that does stuff, and they make it on a modern material. They make them onto plastic, but I kind of like the original yeah. wax one. Yeah, yeah. Um, the the trick is to leave. Plenty of space in the recording, mm -hmm. I think, um, and have plenty of light and shade. Because if it, if there's too much noise, so you couldn't possibly put a modern uh, record, you know, where they maximise the, yeah. the the sound level all the way through, because um, it would just sound distorted, like yeah. mud yeah. Uh, okay. on on that machine. So you you need to like the banjo thing was lots of individual notes and yeah. stuff like that. So. You need to be able to pick out the sounds, you know, from from the thing. And as I say, you can't have too much bass. But uh, what you get is a fascinating sound out of it. So maybe um, if I did harpsichord versions, that harpsichord versions would work well. Yeah, yeah. 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 But I mean, um, I do. <laughs> piano is fine, you know. Okay. Um, uh, p piano voice voices come over very well, and percussive instruments. Brass comes over well. Mm -hmm. um, bass guitar doesn't, and yeah. double bass doesn't particularly. Um, but uh, yeah, um, percussive instruments, really good. And um, when is your next outing with? With the this? cylinders? Yeah. Actually, I don't know. Well, um, you obviously you, you DJ with gramophones. Yeah, with so. gramophones, yeah. Um, well, let's see, Camp Festival's coming up, we'll be there, of course. Um, I, I'm doing a lot in clubs and pubs up and down the country. Um, I also do, as you know, some radio shows. Yeah. So I'll be, I'm, I'm actually recording with Mungo Jerry in two days. Fantastic. Time. And Greg, when you go into clubs uh, yeah. with the gramophones, yes. and you're playing this this old, really great music, yeah. what what are, what's the kind of reaction? Or? It's amazing. Uh, uh, I, I DJed a lot of uh, clubs up and down the country with 78s, and they're uh, rocking records before rock and roll. It's the best way of describing it. So it's rhythm and blues, and the audience is nearly always sort of between 18 and 25 and they just love it you know and it does my heart good you yeah. know to play these records that they probably never heard before but the groove in them is so great that you can't help but dance to them and i suppose the, the, these are the records that informed rock and roll and yeah and everything absolutely that came. yeah absolutely gospel and swing and rhythm and blues and uh, even you know dance bands from the 30s if they've got that groove, then people will move. You know, it's it's fairly straightforward, yeah. and uh, well, you you've seen it in our tent at yeah. uh, Bestival. We we get a, a quite an interesting mix of people dancing yeah. to this stuff. Yeah, fantastic. Well, thank you so much. Um, we have maybe one more cylinder. Yeah, Is sure. Right? Let's put another one on. This one's going to be uh, our, from the Columbia record label. Uh, Columbia Phonograph Company, which is what they still call today, strangely. They're not called, called a record company. How do you know which side to put in? Well, they're ta they're ta uh, they, they are actually tapered, so okay. um, the, the cylinder isn't exactly smooth. It does um, have a sharp end and a, a blunt end, okay. just a little bit. So, this is a tune you might just remember if you've you lived through the 70s. Yes, something completely different. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 